This video is part of the Passport.js user authentication series and there is a link in the description below to that playlist but it can also just be used as a standalone explainer video um, for you that you're trying to understand HTTP headers and cookies a little bit better. So let's get started. What is an HTTP header? I think it's something that we know in the back of our heads kind of what it is, um, especially if we program a lot of web apps, but it's also something that we don't spend a lot of time trying to learn, and we frankly don't need to learn a whole lot about them. That said, we do need to specifically learn about an HTTP header called the set cookie and the cookie header in order to understand how server-side sessions work and kind of interact with the browser. So if we come to google.com right here, I always use this as an example just because it's a pretty arbitrary spot. Um, if you open up your developer console here in Google Chrome and go to the network tab, you'll see that it is pretty much empty right now. But if we click refresh on the Google um, search and we're basically doing a get request to google.com and you'll see a bunch of stuff loading. A lot of these are the resources that run the page or scripts. But at the top, you see this www.google.com. If we click on this, you'll see that there are some headers here. And you'll see that the headers come in three basic categories. First, you have the general headers then you have the response headers, and finally the request headers. What we're specifically interested in, um, in this case to understand what a cookie is and how it works, is the request and the response headers. But we can also kind of explore the rest. Um, you can go on to MDN is a great place to look, and you can see there's you know a link to all sorts of different headers. So we can go down here into security, and these are all the different security headers that you could set in either the general response or request headers. Now let's take a step back and really think about what just happened when we pressed the refresh button in our browser to load google.com. If you think about it, a HTTP client could be anything from an IoT device um, someone like me sitting at my desk or at a coffee shop. Um, you could think of it as just a laptop or a phone. Pretty much anything that connects to the internet is considered an HTTP client. Now on the other side of things is all of the HTTP servers. And those servers, Google in this case, is going to house the information that the clients want to access or update or do other operations on. So in our case, what we did was do a get request to google.com. In other words, we want the resources at that web page. So if you look at the headers here in the Chrome tools, you'll see, as we talked about, we have these three categories. So let's just go ahead and walk through each of them and see what was relevant to our request. So in the, the first one, the general headers, these can be either request or response related. They're just kind of general metadata about the request, such as what is the URL that we're requesting? Um, what type of method are we using? So this is a get request. Um, those were both probably, those are in the request um, side of things. Now if we go to the response side of things, you'll see that we got a status code of 200, which means that we requested data from Google and it sent back the data successfully. So you can see that we have several you know, things that kind of mix between the request and response. Now in our particular situation, when we searched Google, we formed, or we didn't form, but the browser that we were using um, created a request header which is basically instructions for the server um, in what data you know the request wants. So I'm the client here sitting at my computer. So the, the browser on my behalf is gonna say, hey, um, whoever I'm trying to get these resources from, I'm gonna put in the request headers um, what kind of data I accept. 
So you can see that we have things like the accept encoding, accept language, and then just the accept HTTP header. And we're basically saying that we accept HTML, um, we accept XML, and a couple other different options. But you can just think of this request header as the instructions for the server that you're requesting resources from or trying to modify. What type of data that the client, myself, will accept in the browser is not the only thing that you can put in this request header. You can put all sorts of other things. Um, you see there's a cookie in here. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But you also have things like the user agent tells us what browser is requesting this data. Um, and then if, again, you can go to the MDN site and look at a broad variety of different things that you could put in the request header. So you can click on the request context and you can kind of see some of the things that you can put in that. So we know that HTTP headers are basically metadata about our, our HTTP request. So we can also do that on the response, which would be set by the server, which in this case is Google. So one of Google's servers, whichever gave us the content that we're viewing on the web right now, is going to set these response headers. And these response headers are gonna give additional instructions to the client that requested the data in the first place. So you can go through a couple of these and see, um, you can see the content type. So if you remember in the request header, our, you know, the client, which is the browser I'm sitting in and using right now, said I only accept a certain type of data. And then the response is gonna say, okay, you only accept that type of data, here's the data, and here is what type it is. So this is useful if you know we're trying to figure out how to display that data in the browser. Of course, there are other things that, that you'll see here, but I wanna direct your attention to something very relevant to what we're talking about right now, which is the set cookie header. Now you can see that the set cookie header is basically giving key value pairs and you can see, you know, right here it says expires equals Friday the 31st of January 2020 at this specific time. So you might be asking, well, there's a cookie header in the request object and there was a cookie header in the response object. How can that be? What is the difference between the two and how do they work? Over the next few minutes, I'm going to walk you through exactly how the set cookie and the cookie headers kind of work together. And then in another video, we'll actually talk about how this all plays into what we call a server side session. The easiest way to understand what a cookie is and how it works is to remember that HTTP protocol is a stateless protocol. In other words, it's going to constantly forget what the user has done on the site unless we have a way to remember that. So in other words, if we go to Google, let's just imagine this scenario, we go to Google and we sign in to Google. And we'll just assume they actually probably don't use this method, but we'll just assume that they're using cookies and server-side sessions to authenticate us. Um, so what happens is Google, the server, is going to say, okay, the client that just you know signed in gave us valid credentials. And so what we want to do is, you know, send something back that allows the browser to remember that this user has logged in. If we don't have anything like cookies or local storage, probably a more modern way to do it, um, if we don't have these types of persistent storage, then every time we refresh the page, our the state that we had previously where Google said, okay, we logged you in, is going to have to be redone. So every time you refresh the page, you're gonna to have to enter your login credentials, which of course is a terrible user experience, and any site that does that is gonna lose their users immediately because they're gonna get completely tired of typing in their login credentials. So this is where the set cookie and cookie headers come in. So let's do a little experiment here. And I, I know this is not a perfect example, but I think it will do for what we're trying to um, accomplish here. So let's click on the application 
and open up cookies for Google, you'll see that there's all sorts of cookies. Um, you know, Google knows everything about everyone. So we can just go ahead and delete these. It doesn't hurt anything to delete all of these cookies. So at the moment, our browser has no cookies set whatsoever. So we can come back to the network tab and let's go ahead and refresh the page once more. You'll see that we had this google.com here and we can open up the response and request headers. And you'll see that in the request headers, it's pretty much the same as what we had looked at before. And then in the response headers, we once again have these set cookie headers. And what these are doing is basically saying, okay, or the, the Google server is saying, okay, client, I want to set this information about you. So we'll just assume maybe we just logged in and Google wants to tell the browser that I, the client, is logged in and we don't need to re-authenticate every single time that we refresh the page. So what happens here is we have these set cookie headers and let's just pick a very specific um, key value pair here just to see what's actually happening. So let's get um, a pretty easy one. We'll just say the 1P jar. Um, it gives us a date of 2020 11-21. I'm not exactly sure what that means, um, but keep this in mind. This is what we're gonna be looking for. So if you go to the application, you'll see that now these are set in the cookies field. So we have the 1P jar and then the value that was set in this um, response header. So now what our browser will do is it says, okay, now we have a cookie set. So every request that we make within this domain, so google.com, I want to attach those cookies that were set based on this set cookie HTTP header in the response header. So what's going to happen is when we press refresh again, it's going to actually put these cookies in the request headers. So right here in this cookie request header, we should see something like these set cookies that Google the server had put into our browser. So let's click refresh once more, go to the google.com and look at the request headers. And you can see that now this cookie header right here has that 1P underscore jar um, cookie key value pair. So just to recap what just happened, we had a client, me, refreshing or doing a get request against google.com. And whatever Google server that gave me that data said, I want to set a cookie in this client's browser. So it uses the response header to do that. It assigns these values in the set cookie um, header. And then when we reload the page, our Google Chrome browser or any browser for that matter is gonna say, okay, my default behavior is to, is to look up what cookies are currently set in my browser and I'm gonna attach those cookies to every single request for the domain um, context that it is applicable to, which is google.com in this matter. If you really think about it, this method of setting and then the browser just attaching the cookie to each request is a really powerful thing when it comes to user authentication. You could say, hey, maybe my server can do some sort of logic and say, okay, is that user valid, invalid? Did they give me the right password? If they authenticated correctly, then I do the set cookie header in the response object. And then now the user or the client that is using my um, web application now has that cookie that says, yes, this user has already been authenticated. And then the browser, every time it reloads, will attach that cookie and you don't have to re-log in that user. Now the real question is, how long do we keep that user logged in? And that's a totally arbitrary question, but we can do that with the expires piece of the set cookie HTTP header. If we come over to the network tab, 
and look at the response headers from Google, um, you'll see that there's the cookie that's being set. So 1P jar, it looks like this is actually set on every get request to Google. Um, but you'll notice that it, that it has an expires piece to it. So this is what tells the browser how long to store that cookie key value pair within the, the client. So we can actually go through this exercise on our own using some simple JavaScript to see exactly how it's working. So let's go to the console and type in a few quick commands. So first we're going to create a new date, which is gonna represent the date and time right when I click enter. So we'll say enter and then we're gonna say we wanna set the time 20 seconds later. So let's do that. And then finally, let's set a cookie to the browser with the, an expires header at that time. So we really only have a few seconds, but you can see that we have a custom cookie that's gonna be there for about 20 seconds. So if we reload right now, it shows that it's gone. So let's go ahead and do that one more time, a little bit quicker this time. So here's our cookie, go over to application, you'll see that we have the custom cookie and every time we refresh the browser, you're gonna see that cookie is gonna stay there. But then in about 20 seconds, which is coming up here in a, a few seconds, I think, you'll see that that cookie actually will drop off and it will no longer be attached to the HTTP request. So if we refresh, you'll see it's gone and that user will say that that was a cookie that gave a user or the client's authentication status that's gone, the user has to re-log in. Now obviously you're not gonna set a cookie to last for 20 seconds. You might more realistically say that you want the cookie to last for two weeks. And that is a really powerful way to um, keep some sort of persistent state within the browser and not require users to log in every time they refresh the page. Hopefully that made sense. You understand HTTP headers and cookies a little bit better. If you are continuing on with the Passport.js series, um, we'll be talking next about Express Sessions and how they work with these cookies. Um, if you're not continuing on, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe.